Hi, I'm Steve Halliday, and in this video I'll show you how to put together the Adafruit Motor Shield. This image shows us all the parts that are included in, in the Motor Shield kit that we get from Adafruit, and down here at the bottom is the link for the page on the Adafruit website that will teach you about the Motor Shield. This Motor Shield has several different functions to it. It has an H-bridge on it, which allows us to change directions of the motors, as well as control stepper motors and some things like that. We won't be using any stepper motors in our application, but it's nice to know that you could do that with the motor shield if you wanted to. The motor shield consists of the card itself, which is in the center of the image here, as well as all the connectors that you'll need to use with the motor shield. These blue connectors are connectors for the wires that we would hook to the motors or to the power for the motors. These other pins are connectors that we use to connect the motor shield to the Arduino. This set of pins down here in the bottom right, these are pins that we can use to hook up servos. And then in the bottom left is a jumper cable that we can use if we want to try and power the motors off of the Arduino power supply. We won't be doing that. We'll have a separate power supply for the motors because they require a little bit more capacity than just the 9 volt battery that we'll be running the Arduino from. Here's a pin header. These are the pins that will connect the Arduino to the motor shield. and We need to cut this into the appropriate lengths. I'll just use some clippers here. You have to kind of watch it when you cut, cut these because they get away from you a little bit. But I'll cut off eight pins here in this first one. You can see. And then when we're all done, what we'll have done is we'll have created a set of ten, two sets of eight, a set of six, and then two sets of two. We won't use one of the sets of two. We'll take the pins that we've cut and we'll place them in the Arduino. The Arduino will hold the pins straight so that when we put the motor shield on top and we solder them in, the pins will be soldered in the right positions so that they'll clip into the Arduino easily. These pins actually propagate the signal from the Arduino controller up into the motor shield. There, so they'll fit in like that. Now we'll take the motor shield card and we'll place it on top here. And this will position the pins so that we'll be ready to solder them. We see that it fits nicely there. We'll take this two pin connector and we'll place it upside down on the top of the board and we'll use this for a jumper. We won't use this second pin connector and the jumper wire then will connect the two jumper pins together. With the Arduino holding the pins in place, and with the motor shield card on top of the Arduino, we can start to solder the pins so that they'll remain in this position. We need to solder the pins on both sides of the cards. Once we've completed soldering all the pins, we can pull the cards apart and we see that the pins stay in their positions. This will allow us to clip the boards together or pull them apart as necessary. Next we'll put the pins in that connect to the servos. These are sometimes a little bit tricky to put in so I'm using some needle nose pliers to insert them. They face the opposite direction from the pins that connect the motor shield to the Arduino, and we'll solder these in. Next, we'll put the two pins in that we'll use for the power jumper. These pins face the same direction as the servo pins, and we'll flip it over and solder these in. You see that the jumper wire can be used to connect these two pins together. Next, we'll put the motor wire connectors onto the motor shield. These are the blue connectors, and we'll put two adjacent to three, so there's five on each side of the card, and we'll solder these in as well. And as I mentioned earlier, once we complete one side, we'll turn the card around and 
do the connectors on the other side of the card. This allows us to actually have four different DC motors connected to the motor shield. We'll use the last blue two-wire connector for the power. Remember, this is the power connector that we'll use to connect the power source for the motors up to the motor shield. And that pretty much completes our preparation of the motor shield. We can take the jumper wire and we can store that on just one of the pins. That way it doesn't jump across both pins, but that allows us to kind of keep track of where that jumper wire is. And so we can see here's what the final motor shield looks like. Remember, you can get the motor shield along with all the other parts that you need if you want in an entire kit from swarmus.com. In the next video, we will put all the wiring in place that we need and I look forward to working with you then.